Did Dale Jr. almost buy Front Row Motorsports last season? On the Tuesday edition of the Dale Jr. Download this week, Dale mentioned that he and Kelly both sat down with Front Row Motorsports owner Bob Jenkins last year to talk about charters. And in typical Dale Jr. fashion, he kind of just breezed past that bit of information like he was Eminem in the interview and just went on about whatever he was talking about. And that's very typical of Dale Jr. to just be so nonchalant and drop a bit of information like that. And a bit of information I consider to actually be pretty important and something we haven't heard up to this point. Obviously, Dale sat down with Bob Jenkins, and I think there's a lot of questions that I have about that, and I'm sure everybody else does too when they heard that. Does that mean that he sat down with Bob to just talk about the future of charters? Maybe. Did he sit down to talk to him about purchasing a charter? And if he did, does that mean he was looking at purchasing both of FRM's charters? Maybe just one charter? Or did he talk about just purchasing all of Front Row Motorsport outright and then just bringing that in-house lock, stock, and barrel and making it part of Junior Motorsports. It's already just a turnkey cup operations. Obviously, he wouldn't be running Ford, so you would have to swap all those bodies out with Camaros. But other than that, like that is very much a just whole operation that Dale could have just really easily slid right into. Obviously, the price tag is going to be high, and Dale, talking about charters, has mentioned before that he wants JRM to be in the Cup Series, but right now their biggest barrier of entry is basically the cost of a charter, and right now, according to Adam Stern of the Sports Business Journal, the next one to sell is likely going to go for $30 million, which is a substantial amount of cash, especially for Dale Jr., who's notoriously cheap, and that's to each their own, right? If you want to stay rich, you don't go around just spending a whole bunch of money, specifically on race cars, because that's a great way to go from having a large fortune to a small fortune very quickly. Just ask a lot of people, Bobby Ginn included. But that is a bit of interesting information, because at this point, we could have potentially have had Dale Jr. in the Cup Series right now if that would have gone through, if that was even what they were talking about. I think one interesting thing is if he would have bought FRM or their two charters, like he would have got the number 38 car. That number is freed up. So he already has that. Obviously, it's his dad's number. It's his original number. Put them together. Pretty fantastic there. And then the number 88 is available as well. And you can already bet your ass that Hendrick Motorsports would have just been like, yeah, sure. Granted, NASCAR is the one that puts out all of the uh, numbers and issues them. But like, you know, there is brand equity with Hendrick Motorsports and they'd obviously want to check there first, you know, potentially. But it would have worked out really well for Dale Jr. In typical Dale Jr. fashion, everything kind of works out his way, barring, you know, one major event that happened back in 2001. That didn't really go his way. But everything else that he's done, things tend to go Dale Jr.'s way. And having NASCAR's most popular figurehead into the Cup Series as an owner, it would be massive. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people talk about you know, certain broadcasters having, you know, a vested interest in the sport, whether that's team ownership, personal services contract, or whatever. That is something Dale Jr. would have to figure out on the broadcaster side for NBC. But having JRM into the Cup Series would be absolutely massive. The suits down in Charlotte and Daytona would, you know, adore that. That's a ton of merch to sell. Everybody at those merch haulers, you know, right now the Chevy merch hauler has, you know, the... Uh, RCR guys and the call guys in there. I'm telling you right now, JRM as a company would need their own hauler. Like they would sell so much merch. They wouldn't have to go right out of the Chevy one. That is a money printing machine whenever it does happen, especially if it has the number 38 and 88 in it because fans are going to eat up that merch immediately. So, you know, there is the opportunity apparently that, you know, the JRM to cup dream could have happened and it didn't. Yeah, obviously, Bob Jenkins, who is independently wealthy in his own right, doesn't necessarily need to sell the team. And I think if I'm him, I'm glad it, I didn't sell. And I think he's glad he didn't sell right now, too, because he's obviously seen the most success for his team this season from top to bottom. Obviously, winning the Daytona 500 in 2021 is absolutely amazing and good for them. But being consistent, having Michael McDowell likely was going to qualify for the playoffs on points alone. So he had to be consistent across the whole season and good for him. And that's a testament to what FRM and their commitment to this new Gen 7 car has been to elevate their level of performance. Now he moves over and wins a race this year. Not necessarily moves over, but he ends up winning a race this year on speed, on mare. FRM just straight up beat Hendrick Motorsports. If you're Bob Jenkins, you have to be so happy, so proud of what you've been building for a long time. I mean, the better part of nearly two decades 
for FRM. So, you know, finally you're seeing the, the fruits of your labor in a sense. And that's, you know, massive, massive, massive for all of those guys and girls over there. So, you know, it could have been Dale Jr. It could have been JRM that ended up buying Front Row Motorsports. Obviously, they're a name that gets tossed around all the time when people are like, oh, what charters out there are up for purchase? FRM always gets thrown around. Rick Ware gets thrown around. Live Fast and JTG are the ones that you always hear talked about. I can tell you right now, I don't think FRM is going anywhere right now. And that's a good thing because they're winning races or race so far, but they have the speed to do it. And that's, that's massive. So yeah, Dale Jr. Apparently could have almost had a cup team and he just kind of breezed past it in his podcast. Like it wasn't any big deal. And you know, Mike Davis for once actually didn't ask a follow-up question, which is so bizarre because somebody, you know, could literally say, and that's how I ended up paralyzed. And then Mike Davis would be like, so you're telling me that you can't use your legs. And that's typical Mike Davis follow-up question. And instead in this one, he just kind of was like, yeah, that, that happened. Which I guess if you have first-hand knowledge of it, you're just like, yeah, it makes sense to me, even though uh, nobody else knew about it. So yeah, Dale Jr., almost a Cup Series owner, still not. And I don't think that's going to happen necessarily anytime soon unless he buys into a team or has some sort of investor that goes into it with him. But that doesn't really feel like it's the JRM mold on doing things. Not really sure, but like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at BreakHardBlog.